We start a new series today, and our book for this series is called Can We Talk to God? Anybody interested in talking to God a little bit? All right. Our first reading. Can we talk to God? We all know we can talk at God, but it's a different proposition to consider whether we can talk to God. I am considering the topic from the standpoint of communication. Unless we are conscious that we are talking to God, and God is conscious that God is being talked to, we certainly cannot communicate with God. There can be no real communication without a reciprocity of ideas. Either we can talk to God or we cannot. If we cannot, we may as well realize it and no longer try. And if we can, we feel certain that a little conversation with the deity would do us much more good than much conversation with each other. In the old order of thought, we talked at God. We felt as though our prayers ascended and hit the divine ear. And if this were true, they must have often hit this divine ear with a discordant note. In the new idea of life, we are thinking of God as a universal principle intelligence and power as the essence and energy of being we are thinking of god or attempting to at least in universal terms but it is impossible for the finite to grasp the infinite the infinite signifies that which is beyond human knowledge we are thinking of god as a universal and infinite being as perfect law the immutable law of cause and effect and in doing this, discarding the ancient idea of a huge person in the nature of deity. I'm going to read through our affirmation once, and then I'll invite you to declare it with me. I am conscious and aware of the infinite presence of God as me. The infinite pro proclaims itself as my life, and I rejoice in my life as a delivery system for good. Yeah, right? Please stand and let's declare this with conviction. I am conscious and aware of the infinite presence of God as me. The infinite proclaims itself as my life, and I rejoice in my life as a delivery system for good. And so it is. feeling pretty blessed today. How about you? It's sunny, crispness in the air, fall is coming. And prayer is our theme this month. We're talking about having the cosmic conversation, something that is greater than the conversation I have with you over coffee, which is great. And yet, there is something even greater. There is something greater than we are. We use the shorthand word for it, God. But that's just a shorthand word for the infinite essence, something that is indescribable. Some people call it the great mystery. We cannot truly know it, for our minds are finite. And yet there is an infinite mind, an infinite presence, an infinite something. One wise teacher called it that circle whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere. And there's argument over who first said that. <laughs> but it's brilliant, isn't it? And it could be said because the fact is there is only one mind. And although our minds are finite, our bodies appear finite, we are connected to something greater than we are. We are connected to that infinite life. And you know, if I'm connected to something, doesn't that mean I can, wait a second, access it? Hmm. Do you mean I could access the mind of the infinite? I could access the mind of God? Little old me? Uh, yeah. Because we're created in its image and likeness. We are created in the same way that God is. And so its nature is our nature. 
The only reason we don't always express that nature is our own bloated nothingness, as Emerson called it. We let our egos, we let our human experience of life, our problems, our situations, our conditions get in the way of that perfect love, perfect grace, perfect wisdom, perfect power, perfect presence expresses us. I'm just talking about me right now, probably, not you guys, right? <laughs> so can we talk to this God? Can we talk to this God? Not just can we talk at it, as the reading said. Can we talk to it? That is, can we engage in a relationship with it, have a conversation with it, allow it to inform us? And, and as I was thinking about this topic, I was thinking, you know, there's really three things we need to know in order to answer this question. First, we have to know, what would I be talking to? Or who would I be talking to if I were talking to God? The second thing I would need to know is, so where is it? Because, you know, I talk to people all the time who aren't there. <laughs> but it's not a relationship, is it? So I need to know where this God is. I need to know what it is, who it is. I need to know where it is. And the third thing I need to know is, so why the heck am I even talking to it? Why would I want to do that? What would I say? Why would I bother? So who or what is it? Where is it? And why would I want to talk to it? So let's talk. Let's start with the what or the who. And the what or the who is this universal consciousness I was talking about, this universal presence, this thing that is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-being. It is all there is. It is the infinite oneness of all things, that circle whose center is everywhere and circumference is nowhere. And yet, as I said, it is ultimately unknowable because it is greater than we are. We might borrow little pieces of it. We might align with aspects of it. Ultimately, it is unknowable because it is infinite intelligence. Now, I'm pretty smart, but I'm going to confess that my intelligence is not infinite. And yet, through the power of prayer, understanding who and what I'm praying to, why I would do that and what I would say, I can begin to align with that infinite intelligence and so when we're talking about god we are talking about something that all we can do is poke around it right we be with the concepts we practice the direction that we think it might be calling us we kind of pretend we know what it is and then we see how it works out and then we adjust course hmm that implies that we must be, oh, wait a minute, we're back to the Beatitudes. Humble, teachable, available, open, aware, right? Remember, eight weeks we talked about that stuff. We must be available to this infinite what or who in order to know it more fully. And it's a process, right? So as the best I can do, I'm going to say that's who or what God is. Now, the fact is, you're going to know who or what God is for yourself. It's an inner experience, isn't it? We have to go deep with our own awareness of what God is to us. And, you know, nothing scares me more than somebody who tries to tell me what God is. Do you know what I'm saying? Because the fact is, we don't know and we can't know. We can only practice it and experience it. And so for you to truly know what God is... You're going to have to practice it. Damn. You're going to have to be willing to experience it. You're going to have to be willing to be that delivery system for good and discover what God is for yourself. And that's why we come here, isn't it? To practice. To be in spiritual community with one another. To 
learn these principles, to hear about them, to think about how to put them into practice in our lives so that we can have a greater experience of the infinite. But it's an inner experience, and it shines forth from within. And you know, has anybody ever said to you, wow, you've changed as you've come more into alignment with your inner spiritual being? And sometimes they can't even put their finger on it. But that light that shines forth from you when you are in the process of transformation, people may not be able to name it, but they recognize it. They see it. Because they too are part of the divine mind. They too are part of that infinite intelligence. But you see, we're only conscious of that to the degree that we're conscious of that. Right? And one of the things Ernest Holmes said, not in this book, but in one of his other books, he said, he said, is absolutely sure that there is something as far beyond us as we are beyond an ant. Now you think about that. Your awareness, your consciousness, your intelligence, your emotions, all of those things. How far beyond an ant are you? A long ways. Now an ant is a living creature worthy of respect. But we are far beyond it in our evolution and our growth and our awareness. And there is surely something as far beyond us. And they look at us and they go, oh, aren't they really cute? Look at those little ants. They're adorable. <laughs> Worthy of respect and love. But only an ant. And I'm comforted by that thought. Do you know that? I am really comforted by the idea that there is a conscious awareness at least as much greater than I am as I am to an ant. Ah, it's lovely. So ultimately, you get to decide what God is. And the fact of the matter is, your God is going to be what you think your God is. You see, your God is going to be whatever it is that you believe rules the universe. Whatever governs the universe is your God. And if you think your conditions govern the universe, that's going to be your God. If you think your lacks and your needs govern your experience of life, that's going to be your God. If you think there is an infinite intelligence that is a well of potential and possibility, that is your God. Hmm, which one do, would we pick? <laughs> if we pick the bigger idea... We are saying, yes, I am willing to practice knowing that God. I am willing to open my heart to that infinite possibility and to allow myself to be enlivened by its intelligence and by its mind. So, who or what is God? <laughs> God is what you think God is. Bottom line. And you know, we're told in the book of Genesis, you are made in the image and likeness of God. One of the things I'm going to invite us to do this month as we move through this material is to start acting like it. Take a breath with me now. <sighs> Hallelujah. So, where is this God? Well, if God is all there is, it's everywhere. And if it is everywhere, then where we talk to God or how we talk to God is when? Always. <laughs> what? I'm always talking to God? Yeah. As you recite your joys, you're talking to God. And as you recite your pains and losses and conditions... You're talking to who? God. It's all there is. It's everywhere. We are always talking to God in our mind, in our words. We are planting the seeds of our lives in the mind of God with every word because God is everywhere. If it's infinite by its very definition, infinity can't have anything outside of itself. So it has to be right here. And it has to be right here. 
and it has to be right here, and it has to be right there, and it has to be right there, and it has to be right there, and it has to be the air I breathe. Because an infinite cannot have anything outside of itself. So by its very definition, God is everywhere. And as we are searching for this thing called heaven, you know, in the book of Thomas, Jesus said, um, if you're looking for heaven in the sky, the birds are going to get there before you do. And if you're looking for heaven in the ocean, the fish are going to get there before you do. And in the book of, 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 of Luke, he says, he's talking to, um, about the Pharisees who are looking for heaven. And he says, you can look over low here and you can look low there, but the kingdom of God is within. It's within. It's everywhere. It's here, it's there. It's in all places, all times. All dimensions of consciousness. Think about that for a while. So I'm always talking to God. <laughs> Oops. Right? Think about how we use our words. Think about how we use our thoughts. If I think about my speaking and my thinking in the context I have, I am always talking to God. Whoa. I might want to rethink some of the things I say. Oh, and some of the things I think. I might want to think about my thinking. What? And so why would I want to talk to this God? You know, it is interesting. Something calls us, doesn't it? Do you know every culture on the planet has some sort of spiritual life? There is something that calls us to a spiritual life. And the most unlikely people end up in church sometimes. It's kind of crazy, right? It's like, really? Wow, I never thought I'd see you here, <laughs> right? But there is something that is calling us. It's why you got up this morning and put on some clothes and came here. Something said to you, there is something for me there today that is going to awaken me a little more, that is going to fulfill me a little more, that's maybe going to give me some practical tools I can apply in my life and make a difference in the world. There is something in me that wants to learn and grow. And this is why we talk to God. We can't help it. It's an evolutionary impulse. The universe hasn't, I mean, what has the universe been doing for billions of years? Evolving. And we are part of that greater something, and so we are here only to evolve. Now, you know, we were blessed with these human minds that, you know, sometimes don't feel like such a blessing because they get in the way often of our aligning with our divine nature. And yet they are also the key that we've been given to direct our own experience of life, to act from a place of choice, to align with that infinite and divine nature of God. So why do we talk to God? Well, I don't know about you, but I want to learn and grow. I, ha I feel compelled to fulfill this divine impulse to commune with something greater than I am. And so I do things like show up here, do my spiritual practice, stuff like that, become a minister, watch out. <laughs> you never know what could happen. <laughs> So we come to understand that, you know, God is infinite, is the infinite presence, it is all there is, and God is what we think God is, and God is everywhere, we cannot be separate from it. And that there is something deep within us that is calling us to evolve and to grow. And there is a tool that will help us evolve and grow, and it is called prayer. And in our teaching, we specifically talk about affirmative prayer, don't we? You see, I was raised in a teaching where what we did was pleading prayer. Please, God, please, God, please, God, make this so. I remember praying to God, I'd give, I would give, I had a, this little stuffed animal when I was a kid, it was Orange Dog, and my stepdad got sick, and I prayed to God that I would give away Orange Dog if my stepdad would get better.
Well, as a little kid, you could see how that might make a little bit of sense to me. But you know, I had been trained that to get something, I had to give up something. I had been trained to plead and to feel powerless in the face of the infinite divine. But the fact is, if I am created in its image and likeness, there is a way for me to be a lot like God in these situations. And what does God do? And we're going to get into this in detail next week. What does God do? God places a demand on the universe, and that demand is fulfilled. We have a tool called prayer. Using that tool, we can place a demand upon the universe and watch that demand become fulfilled. This is how Jesus taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? The Lord's Prayer doesn't have any please God, please God, please God, make it so. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day my peace. Give us this day. Forgive us. Placing a demand on the universe. Forgive us as we forgive. Placing a demand on the universe. Not some wishy-washy pleading kind of a something, yeah? And so over the next four weeks, we are going to look at this tool called affirmative prayer. And we're going to look at each step. And we are going to learn how to place our demand on the universe. Are you ready for some of that? You see, there are lots of ways we can pray. We can pray prayers of thanksgiving and praise. Yes? Hallelujah. Got to do that. Gratitude is a causative force. So we want to pray our thanks. We want to pray our praise of the infinite mind. We can pray for understanding. What did the Hebrew Bible tell us? With all thy getting, get understanding. I don't know about you. A lot of times what I need most to be praying for is greater understanding. And we can also pray for very specific things that we want to experience in our lives. We might call this a healing but you know what it really is? It's a revealing. See, nothing can be healed. Only a good can be revealed. Only something that already exists as a wholeness and a perfection can be revealed. So these are some of the ways that we might pray. And the fact is, whenever a truth is spoken, not only are we talking to God, but we are talking like God talks. We are using the language of God. So over the next four weeks, we are going to learn this language, this language of love and peace and joy. And knowing that as we recognize God, it recognizes us. Did you catch that? As we recognize the infinite, we are calling forth its recognition of us as an individual manifestation or expression of it. And so we begin to recognize this presence. We begin to align with its nature and we begin to experience a greater good in our lives and we begin to evolve and grow and become greater revealers of truth on planet Earth. So can we talk to God? We are always talking to God. What are we saying? This is the exploration we're going to take up in the next four weeks. And so what I want to do right now is close this message with a prayer, with an affirmative prayer. And I invite you to be present to this affirmative prayer, an open and willing participant in this tool, in this process as we surrender more and more fully to talking to God in a way that actually serves and heals and opens and lifts and inspires. And so please join me in the sacred breath. We take the sacred breath together. And we simply breathe. Recognizing and knowing there is only one life, one power, one presence, one beingness, one essence. It goes by many names, the living one, the living power, 
the infinite love, grace. And these are but some of the names of God. And we allow ourselves right here and right now to recognize this presence of God as wisdom. We allow ourselves to recognize this presence of God as perfect clarity. We recognize this presence of God as truth and as power, infinite power. The power that burns at the core of the sun is the very power of God. The clarity and wisdom with which the earth revolves about the sun and its place in the universe. This is the clarity and the wisdom of God. This presence, this power is right where we are. We cannot be separate from it for we are created in its image and likeness. And we simply lift ourselves in the conscious awareness of this presence and of our infinite oneness with it. And so God's wisdom is our wisdom. God's clarity is our clarity. God's power is our power. There is no separation, no division, only an infinite oneness. And we align ourselves with that as we move into a new realization of life. We move into a greater awareness of the good that God is expressing in, as, and through us. I know that we walk in, in grace and in love this week as we prepare our minds and hearts for a new relationship with the infinite, as we open our awareness to something greater. I know that as we leave this place this day, we are anchored in a clarity about our place in the body of God and that we walk with that sense of wisdom and love and peace and joy. I know that anchored in this awareness of God as the infinite presence, God as all there is, God as one with all that we are, we are indeed fulfilled. We walk a happy step. Our hearts joyous. Everyone we see blessed by our presence, whether they know it or not. We simply say yes to the infinite mind of God operating in, as, and through us this week. And so I do give thanks. I give thanks for the opening. I give thanks for the awakening. I give thanks for the clarity and the wisdom with which we walk. I give thanks for the power of prayer that has called us forth into a greater yet to be. And I give thanks that God is good and I am a delivery system for that good. And so I release this prayer simply knowing that it is done in the mind of God. And so it is done in my life. It is done in the lives of everyone in this room. I call it good and very good. And so it is. Amen.